Sorry, I was a little bit peckish. I was planning on doing all this at my computer. Or desktop, I should say. But I got a little peckish trying to knock this out. So I was taking a break from Guild Wars 2 again. For the most part. I planned on skipping a couple of expansions and then coming back and then having all these changing content. But then I learned that basically the expansions are going to be coming quicker now than they used to. And then thinking about it, trying to process kind of what my problem with, with the game was. When I last left, I kind of got it hollowed out to a specific point. But I had hopes, you know, that everything's going to get turned around. And now with the new expansion, I'm thinking, you know, maybe having some hope was warranted, okay? The game in and it itself isn't bad, okay? Guild Wars 2 is a great game. I just think that it took a pretty big step away from what it was in Guild Wars 1. And I knew on launch it was going to have some problems. It was going to be kind of slow getting off. When they did the five playable races with five starting zones, that was kind of the first stop that I thought was like, they can, they might have spread themselves a little bit thin and didn't give them enough time to, you know, make some more content. And then rushing straight into the dragon hype. Like, I think one dragon would have been good. And then just kind of take a step back and let the other dragons just be in the background as you do your expansion. But the way that things are set up now, I kind of like it. And hopefully the volume on here is good. So, what I think I've figured out on why exactly I haven't had as much luck with Guild Wars 2 as a lot of people, I've stuck around for, you know, the last 10 years or whatever, right? 10, 11 years. However long it's been since launch. Um, I think it's my particular play style that's kind of left out. But I think now with the new expansion, some of the stuff that I'm seeing is kind of bringing back some of those old Guild Wars 1 vibes. Um, we've seen that they made a lot of connection to Guild Wars 1, um, like locations and lore. Like they did that in the uh, original core game a little bit, but it wasn't as profound as the newest expansion. Um, certain characters they make connections to. That's another big one. But the main thing that I'm seeing as well is, one, the detachment of weapons from Elite Specs, which is very reminiscent of Guild Wars 1 system. It also frees up a lot of builds for me to play classes that I wouldn't have otherwise played, because some of the weapon combinations, like Shield, for instance, on some classes, um, were connected with things that I didn't want to do. So I think that opening up that freedom is going to be good. And people bash me for suggesting something like that when we're talking about elite specs because they always want elite specs. But there's only so many elite specs you can do. In my mind, the elite specs should be tied to big boss events. Um, so each dragon that died unlocked uh, elite specs. And then if there's a really major big boss threat that we defeat in the future, you can bring in a couple more elite specs. Give them more time to plan it out. Now... Sorry, I'm at the other house, so i got to try not to make a mess.
So, I like having the freedom to have the weapons and use whatever kind of weapons that you want. Um, the the other thing is this relic system. So, I get that they, it kind of sucks that they removed um, certain armor abilities off the armors. I um, actually kind of nerfed a couple of my builds removing those armors. But, the relics, I think, are kind of important because... In my mind, it's connecting back to something from Guild Wars 1 as well, the uh, the skill capture system. So if these relics are no longer connected to armor and they're physical items in game that you can earn or learn somehow, um, say defeating particular bosses or something along those lines, that would give someone like me um, more of an incentive to go out and do uh, content in the game. So, for an example, I figured out that basically... My style of playing Guild Wars has always been PvP and basically having like player interaction. So like I always made my characters, played through all the stories, made my characters really strong, engaged in PvP um, pretty often, became really good in PvP in most of the games that I play. But then any time that I go back to PvE, I would go and do... Um, like the starting zones, I would find new players, socialize with the new players, and I would have, do like full story runs with them, I'd help them beat the whole game and get it, get it, you know, all the way to the end. Uh, Guild Wars 2 doesn't really have that in the starting zones and stuff, there's no way for me to meaningfully impact somebody while they're starting the game, I can't really help them level all too much. Um, I can't really help them with their personal storyline. I, I get no rewards for doing um, storylines as well. If there's anything that I was going to repeat, it would be storyline um, progressions on characters. And that's the main thing that I've been doing every time I remake a character. I go and do stuff, and I've made thousands of characters probably at this point. Um, now, with the new expansion, I kind of get hope on this because you're seeing kind of a separation, sort of like... Um, prophecies and factions and stuff compared to uh i have the north in the original games so like you used to be able to do missions and stuff like with henchmen and then it was usually better to team up with a, a person right well i'm kind of seeing central Tyria in the core game and the core storyline and these dragon expansions right now as um prophecies sort of like it's something that you can do easily enough but it isn't going to be very difficult um but as the expansions go on i would assume they would at least try to make the storylines a little bit harder and now you don't have all the support from dragon's watch or you know all this you're still going to have people to help you i'm sure but it seems to be potential for them to allow players to start grouping up together for harder story based content again which would then unlock rewards which would, would give me some someone like me something to do um because i don't particularly have any interest just randomly going out in the world and doing um just generic events running in circles and stuff for gold uh my motivations have always been to help people and to do the the main storylines and stuff um, but when you go and do those big events, it's just a, a, a mosh pit of people. You're not really helping anybody. You're just kind of joining the group. Uh, so I would hope that something like that comes in, but the relic system would actually give me a big incentive to go and do world bosses or anything like that, because we've seen a couple of those relics actually give you, uh, abilities that seem to be kind of similar to creatures and this is also a method that they could do to get rid of the the class boundaries because everyone would have access to it um and then getting it off of the armors as well is going to allow any class any build to have that option um so say like the golems the golemancy ruins and stuff for instance like there was power builds or condition builds that just you wouldn't be able to use those and like right now that that's gone so i can't use it on my Asura mesmerier anymore but if it comes back i can put it on any character that i want which is a huge huge deal um 
because I think so. That's going to be basically a replacement for Gilworth's capture system. I'm a hundred percent Leo, and they could easily make those those boxes that you can get uh, PvP and and World v World and all that stuff methods to get those. But I think in the PVE element, going and fighting the physical boss would be a lot cooler to get those abilities, um, or like even like a special PVE version um, compared to a PvP or something would be cool. But no, it's it's actually giving me a lot of hope for the game. Um, because the other big thing here is that the tie-ins to the lore and stuff is more grounded. Um, they got connections to the dragons and stuff, it looks like, in there as well. Uh, so it kind of ties the game in a lot better. The story, f from what I've seen, appears to feel more Guild Wars 1-like, which I do like. Um, but the other thing is, like, when I came over to Guild Wars 2... We had thousands of people from like top massive guilds come over from Guild Wars One, and those people died out like quick, um, you know. And then some of them would come back on every now and then, but it's it's very rare. Um, so like ninety percent of all those people that I knew coming over from Guild Wars One are just gone. So in Guild Wars Two, you can meet new people, but the, the the harsh reality of trying to have meaningful interaction with them at the very beginning of the game, besides like, you know, showing them the ropes and how to do things, it's it's very difficult, um, especially if you're trying to do it with like 80 or 100 people or something, you're trying to make a big friend group, and then, you know, new players trying to go and do things on the map, they all get separated, you can't get them to group together, you know, they all got things that they want to do. Um, I think, you know, if you allow them to do that and then have areas like this new expansion where players like myself could be and then find these people coming over and be like, hey, you want to do the expansion? And then we play together do, through the storyline. Um, that'd be great. And then, you know, have some sort of reward in there that, you know, people actually do storyline missions um, would be really good. Because the main thing I do is just the PvP um, and more so the arena fights than anything these days. And the story missions helping people. And I think that's the big part that's missing for me to like have an active role into the game again. But I am coming back to the game. Um, I've managed to talk a couple of people that played the Baldur's Gate 3 and stuff uh, with me to try the free version of Guild Wars. So again, I'm not going to be able to really help them very much at the very beginning. Like I could follow them around. But unless I make a new character, I'm just going to kill everything in three seconds. Um, but if they get to, like, an expansion content, like this new expansion pack, um, and the bosses and stuff were more difficult, you know, say later on the expansions get bigger, um, badder, then maybe they're more difficult. I could help them go through that and then make friends that way compared to just, you know, trying to stick out in a crowd of 500 people. Because... Um, that's probably the biggest killer of the game in my mind right now. Um, disconnecting it from, you know, like the customization options are a big plus. The more customization you can get on a character, the better. Like it doesn't need to be just elite specs, but I think these relic things are going to be big. Um, the storyline seems to be improving. So that was another one that's, that's big. And then just, the potential of being able to have like instant based interaction between groups of players like Guild Wars 1, I think would be big um, just to get people back together. Like people that have top line builds, like, you know, they're going to be fine. You know, there's plenty of guides for people to go find top of the line builds. If they're copy pasting those for like meta events and stuff, they can do that for storyline things. But players that use like less suboptimal or more role play type builds or anything like that. Uh, players that are less experienced or don't have an interest in meta style. Uh, I think allowing them to group up in these instance content, which isn't really as hard to have more one-on-one -on -one experiences with their group of friends, it would be great. Um, and hopefully that's the way this goes. But we'll see with the expansions. But I'm going to get back into the game, actually probably try and do more of the PvE stuff. If I get a group of people back together where I can actually play and have you know, people that I can interact with on a daily basis that want to do stuff, I'll probably get to play more of the game. But as it sits for the last 10, 11 years, like I've been playing the game, um, you know, and I've tried and tried and tried just 
trying like my own custom builds and you know playing the game and testing things and it just wasn't that amazing like i stuck around um pretty much the last one out of any of my social groups from the original game but it's you know it's not been the best thing like i don't have the motivation to go and do some of the stuff just for no reason for gold um like ascended armor and legendary armor I, that's probably the last point i'm going to make i didn't have any interest in ascended or legendary armor or legendary weapons uh anything that's like tedious crafting but with this new expansion as well they had that teaser art for legendary armor that has that specific look um and i am one of those kind of people that will go out of my way to get something of it think it looks good uh you know, and that obsidian armor, the heavy armor, the helmet, and the pauldrons. I don't like crafting. I hate crafting and all that, but that's the kind of stuff that I'm willing to kind of grind for to get those couple of items. Um, so if they make expansions, even if it's just with the legend, like one set of legendary armor in the expansions with a new fresh look, um, that could be interesting too because it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it means anyone that gets an expansion can get access to a legendary armor. But also that unique look, if it looks really good, could draw people in. Like if there was a really good heavy piece on the, a next legendary set of armor and another expansion in the future, I might grind for that as well um, to get that. I'd be more interested in grinding for that than, you know, whatever people do with their gold and stuff now. Because it doesn't really affect me in the game at all. Um so I guess that's my two cents, but I feel like Guild Wars is on the right track. It's it's coming um and it's probably gonna take off if it keeps on this path. I think it's gonna be pretty good. It's gonna take off, it's gonna be going on for another twenty, thirty years, which is something you like to see because you know, it's been ten years or something for this thing to start rolling and now we're getting into like purely in-game stuff for the most part. Should be pretty good.